Nvidia seems absolutely terrified about what AMD is about to release, and quite frankly, they should be. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10, just search Activate Under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. All right, so recently there's been a lot of talk about the RTX 50 series and RDNA 4, and in fact, I believe it was AGF over on Twitter who recently mentioned that the RTX 50 series had to be so incredibly powerful because not only would it be going up against RDNA 4, but also also, RDNA 5. That's right, you heard me correctly. RDNA 5 is likely to be coming out within the lifespan of the RTX 50 series, which, if you've been paying attention to leaks, is apparently going to be coming out by the end of this year, meaning that RDNA 5 could be coming much sooner than we had originally anticipated, as it looks like AMD is trying to push forward RDNA 5 as quickly as they can to compete with, again, the RTX 50 series. And RDNA 5, guys, I do think could be a complete paradigm shift for AMD and the GPU market as a whole, as this will be their first true multi-chip model module design with multiple GPUs. But enough talk about history, let's talk about the future. Why is the RX 9000 RDNA 5 series looking so juicy and why is it scaring Nvidia so much that they are wildly overbuilding the RTX 50 series, at least according to rumors? in my opinion. Well, let's go ahead and take a look. So to get an understanding of how insanely powerful RDNA 5 is likely to be, well, we first have to take a look at the basic size of the 7900 XTX, the first stepping stone towards a multi-GPU design. This thing comes in at around 529 millimeters squared and is based off of the 5 slash 6 nanometer process from TSMC. But this time around with the 9900 XTX, well, AMD is likely going to be going larger. In fact, I think they're going to be going much larger. And the reason why I say that is because with multiple GPUs, you can put together a significant amount of them while not having to significantly increase the cost, an issue that we do face currently with a monolithic design, much like you're going to see on the RTX 5090. So you could easily take two slightly smaller dies, push them together and get a much larger overall GPU without actually increasing the cost too much. So I do believe they will be increasing that number significantly and there should be a new interconnect design that will allow this multi-GPU design to not have massive latency and issues that you would alternatively see if they stuck with their current MCM approach and just smacked on another die. So I do expect to see a significant increase in cash, which will help that latency, but also they should be using a next generation Infinity fabric, which I don't know the exact details right now, but do expect it to be much higher bandwidth and lower latency than the current Infinity fabric you see on their CPUs. And I will have a video linked in the description below, which actually does discuss a couple of possibilities for a new Infinity Fabric design with much better bandwidth. Now, in any case, this will allow them to connect the multiple GPUs at a low latency with high bandwidth, allowing for incredibly good performance, which will allow them to scale really, really large, as I just mentioned. So, Getting into the weeds of what this GPU will look like, well, it's very likely to be produced on the TSMC N3 enhanced slash four nanometer nodes. And according to an Anantech article, here are some of the improvements you can expect to see from N3 enhanced versus the current five nanometer node that they're using for the 7900 XTX. 32% lower power at the same clock speeds and 30% better density on the chip. Now, I do wanna go ahead and focus in on those two things real quick here to explain exactly why this is such a huge deal. So first let's talk about that density. Now, a 30% increase in chip density would allow them to, well, if we take the 6,144 shaders on the 7900 XTX, increase that to roughly 8,000 shaders, but that's not much of an increase. And with multiple GPUs, I think they can actually go much larger. In fact, I think they'll pack in around 30% more than that by connecting two dies of roughly 5,120 shaders for a total shader count of 10,000 
6,240, a significant increase over the 6,144 that we currently see on the 7900 XTX. And this would bring them to roughly 680 millimeters squared, a massive increase over the 530 roughly on the 7900 XTX. But again, keep in mind, these are multiple GPUs being put together. So this is very, very doable. Now we also have to consider the other enhancement, the 32% lower power on the N3 enhanced node. Because if we went to 10,240 shaders at a higher clock speed, well, your power would go out the window. But on this new node with some architectural tweaks, actually increasing from 6,144 to 10,240, even at higher clock speeds, would likely put them at around 450 watts, a pretty modest increase and something that would put them in line with what Nvidia is already doing. And then also let's go ahead and talk about those clock speeds. Because what we do know is that the 7900 XTX can be overclocked in excess of three gigahertz. So three gigahertz, I do think is a very reasonable increase to be seeing on this new architecture, just with some minor tweaks and improvements to allow the GPUs to really stretch their legs without really increasing the power too much. So at 450 watts, three gigahertz, as well as 10,240 shaders, what does this actually give us in terms of performance? Well, this GPU with those specs would allow for actually almost exactly double the performance of the 7900 XTX, but wait, it gets a lot more juicy than that. But real quick, I wanna talk about a few more of the specs before we get into the insane increase you're likely gonna be seeing in ray tracing. So we do have to keep in mind that yes, the shader is going way up, the clock speeds are going way up, but also I do believe the memory bandwidth will increase significantly as well, as I do believe the 9900 XTX, which by the way, get subscribed as I will be talking about what I believe the 9800 XTX and 9700 XT and 9600 XT will be in the future future along with RDNA 4. But again, let's get back to that 9900 XTX, a flagship that I believe AMD will be releasing well, sooner than I originally thought. This thing is likely gonna be packing upwards of a 512-bit bus if we just do some simple math, allowing them to get up to 32 gigabytes of memory. And keep in mind, this will also be GDDR7. And by the time this thing releases, 32 gigabits per second GDDR7 should be relatively normal, meaning that, well, you'll be seeing 2,048 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, over double the amount of memory bandwidth that we currently see on the 7900XTX. And all all these specs and bandwidth put together not only gives us double the amount of typical rasterization performance, but in terms of ray tracing, I do believe that AMD will be targeting around a 50% increase in ray tracing per core. That actually brings us to three times the amount of ray tracing performance in the 9900 XTX versus the 7900 XTX. So that is absolutely insane if we really do end up getting around three times the performance which i do think is actually doable by the time this thing comes out that will actually put them really competitive with the rtx 5090 now some leaks and rumors are suggesting the 5090 could maybe be reaching upwards of two to two and a half times the ray tracing performance of the rtx 4090 and if they do that that's really impressive but this gpu here actually would bring amd up to speed roughly in ray tracing they'd probably be a little bit behind in ray tracing if Nvidia really does exceed 2x on their 5090, but it will bring them within the ballpark. And currently that's not the case with the RX 7000 series. But in terms of rasterization performance, this card would actually beat a theoretical RTX 5090. Of course, we're still a little bit of a ways away. There's a lot of speculation going on here based on what we know about upcoming nodes, as well as, you know, fabric interconnect designs that are coming in the near future, as well as GDDR7. So while a lot of this is based on some real data, we just won't know until the designs are finalized, both with Nvidia as well as AMD, who's gonna actually win. But if I was to make a guess right now who I think would win, I actually think AMD could win in regular rasterization performance with this GPU. The math lines up, it's all looking like it's gonna actually happen. And it would be happening at a far lower price as gluing together multiple GPUs is gonna be far, far cheaper than actually trying to build one giant one. And it should actually allow them to be a little bit more efficient as well as it does sound like the RTX 5090 will be produced on the four nanometer node and this one, I do believe from AMD, will be on the three nanometer or possibly three nanometer enhanced node, giving them actually an advantage in that power efficiency. Whether they can take full advantage of that, 
we'll see. But overall, it's looking good. And in terms of release date, I know what you're asking. Obviously, we don't know for sure, but it does look like it's very likely to happen sometime between quarter two and quarter four of next year. So it is gonna come out after the RTX 5090. It's just a question of, will it be six months after or will it be a whole year? Obviously, six months after would be far, far better, but it really depends on how fast RDNA 4 launches. Is RDNA 4 gonna come out this summer or is it gonna be as late as the end of the year? Only time will tell, something we don't fully have the answer to, but very exciting stuff regardless, and I absolutely love discussing future GPUs. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think the RDNA 5 can really beat the RTX 5090, and will it actually come out by the second half of next year, or do you think this is all just way too optimistic and none of this is gonna occur? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.